false thumb, which is used along with... Question 16. Humans and many other primates have opposable thumbs. In the giant panda, a modified wrist bone forms a false thumb, which is used along with the five digits to manipulate bamboo. We have a list, convergent evolution, divergent evolution, and natural selection. Evolution of the thumbs of primates and the false thumbs of giant pandas has involved. Okay, so we are looking at evolution. So for a start, we can see for certain I must have natural selection. That is part of evolution generally. Um, so I'm going to get rid of A and B because it's not going to be either of them on their own. Right now, primates and pandas, if we looked at a kind of phylogenetic tree here, might be my pandas up on this one over here and primates are over here. So what we've got is two totally different branches of the tree. Okay, so that was divergent evolution happening to get them there. But we're looking at the thumbs. Okay, so the thumbs are two different species from different lineages that have ended up with the same, pretty much the same solution, very similar solutions. Um, so what they've actually done is they have ended up with a similarity, even though they came from two totally different places. So what we have is convergent evolution and selection. So C. Okay, haemophilia or haemophilia A is a sex linked condition that, show, that slows blood clotting. The allele for normal clotting X big H is dominant to the allele for haemophilia. The diagram gives information about the inheritance in one family and then from the information we're looking for true statements. I'm just going to work out what I can work out and then I'll be able to get the answer for this one. Okay, I think I'm going to use, make sure I've got a narrow enough pen that I'm not going to, it's going to be clear. Okay, right. Always start with the blokes in this because they have much simpler genetics in terms of what you can see. They're not going to be carriers. Okay, so an affected son must be X little h y. Okay, the unaffected father must have been X big h y. The unaffected grandfather, S, must have been X, big H, Y. The affected grandfather, Q, must have been X, little h, Y. Okay, these are the ones that we can tell for certain to begin with. Okay, right, then we've got to do some kind of backtracking and figure out what's going on with this one. Okay, so uh, P and Q had a daughter, so that's X, X over here. And Dad could only have given the X little H, but she was unaffected. So that meant she it was X big H and that must have come from grandmother P. But we have no idea what is on the other X. Is it a big H or a little H? We can't tell, okay? On the other side, the unaffected father um, got the Y from his dad, grandfather S. So the X big H must have come from grandmother I, R. Um, and the same thing, we have here is I don't know what that one is okay right so we now have the unaffected daughter down here the unaffected daughter must be x x obviously uh, must have got an x big h from dad she was unaffected but there is a 50 50 chance of her getting either of these and it wouldn't even have mattered because she would still be unaffected so we don't know Okay, so the only ones that we can tell for sure are Grandfather Q, uh, Grandfather S, the father, and the son and the mother. Okay, these ones we know their full genotypes, the rest we don't. So let's have a look and see again what they're saying. The genotype of Grandmother P must be big H, little h. Well, no, I don't know what that one is, so no. The genotype of neither grandmother can be determined. Yeah, I have question marks on both of them. The genotype of both the unaffected mother and her daughter must be big H, little h. Well, that we said the daughter we couldn't figure out. And the genotype of neither the mother or her daughter can be determined. Well, we did figure out the mums, so that's wrong. So we are absolutely certain that it is B. Okay, red deer in Scotland have no natural predators. Control of the growth of a population to prevent it from outstripping resources is achieved by annual culling. The number killed annually must be greater than the recruitment, which is the annual population increase due to births. Since birth rates vary, computer models are used to generate three estimates for recruitment based on birth rates at 30, 35 and 40 percent. The number of red deer, deer culled annually is recorded in different areas. Table shows cull totals for one year in four areas along with the estimated recruitment. If the birth rate is 35 percent, the areas in which the cull is sufficient to prevent population growth would be. OK, so it tells you uh, the number killed must be greater than the recruitment. 
right? They've then said, um, if the true birth rate is 35%. So here is my 35%, here is my true birth rate, and here is my call total. So I need my call total to be bigger than my 35%. So yes, in North Ross, uh, no, in East Loch Eric and Redalvin, yes, and Noidor, no. See? Okay, many species display some characteristics that are typical of our selection and some that are typical of K. Which of the following species displays only K selected? Okay, so K selected are your species that are going for steady state, top of the, of the growth curve. Okay, so we are looking at uh, long generation time. We are looking at small number of offspring. We are looking at very good survival of those, so high survival. And that is because of high investment, parental investment. Generally, you're looking at other things like long childhoods and um, a longer generation time in terms of reproductive age, all these kind of things. Okay, so we're looking for things which only have this type of group. Um, so let's see, leatherback turtles lay up to nine large clutches of eggs per week. Right, okay, there we go. Nine large clutches of eggs. That's you straight away doing a large number of offspring. They receive no parental care. Well, that's totally wrong. And small proportion survives. So A is definitely wrong. B, Arctic terns usually lay two eggs per clutch. Adults are aggressive in defence. More than 50% of offspring live to 30 years of age. Right, okay, that, that's our answer. Okay, but just to be clear on the other two. English oak trees, slow growing, so that's okay. Do not produce seeds until at least 40 years of age. That's a slow generation time or long generation time and a late um, onset of maturity. Fair enough. Mature seed trees produce many thousands of seeds. Forget that. And only a small proportion survive. So that's why that one's out. Common dandelions rep rapidly, sorry, readily colonise disturbed ground. Uh, so that again, that's more for our selected anyway. Grow rapidly, uh, several times a year, many seeds. You know, this is definitely not anywhere near K. So B. During the ritualised cor courtship in peafowl, the male spreads and shakes his tail feathers to attract a female before stepping back and bowing. This is followed by loud mating calls. This type of fixed action res pattern response can be a result of. So we're looking for how this works for the for the particular species. Okay, this is an example, just to be very clear, it's a nice definition of it actually, species specific sign stimuli. Okay, it's a very particular set of behaviours which is only um, going to be recognised by the same species. It is not male-male rivalry because it's a courtship behaviour from male to female. It isn't imprinting because that is when you're looking at um, the young, normally hatchings, that are um, imprinting on the first adult, effectively large object is really what we're looking at for imprinting, but tends to be something living and walking around. Um, that's the one where they show little pictures of ducks walking around after um, dogs. Okay, and an honest signal, you don't know if it is an honest signal or not. There's no information about this actually telling you things like, I'm very healthy and I have low parasite load. They might just be very pretty. Okay, so not that, it's D. Okay, an in vivo study involves observations made in. It's a straight definition. It's not necessarily natural habitat. Um, it's not a living cell culture. Um, it is a living organism. And it's not extracts prepared from living tissues. These, uh, these two are in vitro. And this might be part of it. It might be part of the natural habitat of an animal. But living organism is all we're looking for for in vivo. Okay, eggs of the parasitic liver fluk, fluke. Um, are found on vegetation and can be eaten by marsh snails. Inside snails, the eggs develop into larvae which move to the end of their tentacles. Tentacles become swollen and brightly coloured resembling striped caterpillars. Infected snails become more active during daylight when predatory birds mistake the abnormal tentacles for caterpillars and eat them. The larvae within the tentacles complete their life cycle within the bird's body. Eggs are passed out of the birds and faeces. Which items on the list represent part of the extended phenotype of the parasite? So the extended phenotype is 
the impacts that you see out with of the actual organism itself. Okay, which items? So which items on the list represent that? So we're looking at prey selection, the modification of the snail tentacles, changed activity of snails, feeding method of snails. I think you're actually easier getting rid of the things that are not. Okay, so prey selection by birds is not actually being affected because it's saying the predatory birds mistake them for for caterpillars so they are still doing what they would naturally do they're going for caterpillars they just don't know that they're not caterpillars so it's not prey selection that's been changed okay um it tells you up here found on vegetation and can be eaten by marsh snails so again this has not been changed by the liver fluke this is just when they're feeding they pick it up so it's not the feeding method and that actually gives you your answer but to be clear why uh, modification of the snail tentacles we've got they've become swollen brightly colored um, so this is something that you're seeing out with the organism but in the snail and activity of the snails changing again that is definitely something which happens out with of itself um, but is definitely part of its parasitic phenotype okay so two and three c Question 25, last one in the multiple choice. Uh, we've got the graph showing data derived from a study investigating the effectiveness of a drug, huh, PZQ, no way I'm attempting to say that one, on Ugandan children with symptoms of, I know it doesn't say Bill Hart's here, but I still say that because I really can't say that word. Okay, right, so we've got age three, age five, age six, and age eight. We've got boys and girls, and we've got the dosage at 40 and increasing to 80 and 40 increasing data, so that's the increase in the dose. At what age does the data suggest that children would receive most benefit by increasing the dose of, dosage of the, of the drug? Okay, so what we want is for the dose at 40, so if, here's age eight, okay, the dose at 40 to not overlap at 80. Okay, so that looks not too bad for the boys, it's a tiny overlap. And girls, again, but this is pretty high even at the 40 okay um if we look at the six year old here's the boys and the girls sorry the boys at 80 that has increased a bit of an overlap here um the girls at 40 and 80 again really close um in terms of the overlap and this was a high survival um even at 40 um at five years here's your boys and there's the girls Again, um, there's an overlap in the boys, I think a tiny overlap in the girls, and pretty decent kind of cure rate, even at the low dose, it's the 40 in the boys, is maybe worrying at the five. But when we go down to three, here are the boys, and then here are the boys if you up the dose to 80. Now that is a significant improvement. Um, and here's the girls, and we see the same. So if you're doubling the dose, you look at where you're even with your your kind of error in here, taking this down from the boys, you end up with um, an individual cure rate between 0.6 and 1, which is which is just so much better than taking the boys and the girls spread here, um, what something like 0.25 or something like that, up to 0.6. Okay, so you're doing a, a big change. Um, so the best one's got to be at three years. So the answer is A. And that's the multiple choice.